I think that it is really important that we're very clear on where our power comes from, what's happening inside our bodies and our intuitions, and how we might act on that power. And that's what I actually want this series to be about. So yes, an element of fun. I so hope it's fun for you. But deep down, I want this to be a series about your personal power. Welcome. You are listening to Our Mindful Nature, formerly titled The Mindful Minute. I'm your host, Meryl Arnett. This podcast explores the deep connection between land and self through nature-based meditations and meditative experiences that invite us back into belonging to each other, to our ancestors, to the earth, and to all beings that make up this universe. If you would like to access these meditation practices as standalone audio files, please subscribe to my newsletter at merylarnett.com. It's free, and you'll receive a new mini meditation each week, along with behind-the-scenes content and bonus material for each podcast episode. All right, grab a cup of tea, pop in your headphones, and find a comfy seat. Let's settle in for today's episode. All right. Happy Monday, my friends. Um, I brought a prop. Are we ready to talk about witches? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to be here with you. I'm excited to embark on a new meditation series, one that I hope is really fun, but also I hope really insightful or valuable for you as we move into the fall season. So we are embarking on an exploration of the witch archetype. And of course, while some of us are like, yay, witches, fun, I'm sure other of us are wondering why witches in a meditation class. Maybe that's weird. I don't know. And here's why. Aside from the obvious, like, we're stepping into spooky season and it feels timely and fun, which I love. But perhaps more importantly, you know, what I want for us in this series is to explore what our own sources of personal power are. That's the premise, actually, of the series. And if you want to look at, the, you know, there are many ways to look at witches, right? From the storybook, evil crone hag witch who carries the poisoned apple, to the devil worshiper, to the pagan dancing under the moon. There, there's all different sort of views. But a piece of this is really, you know, when you look at the people, mostly women, but not all, that were burned between 1450 and 1700, what most, if not all, of those people have in common is that they would be lumped under the category of other. Other as in, um, I think differently, or I act differently, or I believe differently, or I look differently. And because of that, because my personal source of power looks different from what quote unquote they think it should look like, I will be a witch, a bad person, somebody to be scared of. And I think for us, as we're in the middle of election season and it's so noisy and there's a whole lot of they quote unquote telling us what we should believe or not believe, should do or not do, should care or not care about, all of that noise. I think that it is really important that we're very clear on where our power comes from, what's happening inside our bodies and our intuitions, and how we might act on that power. And that's what I actually want this series to be about. So yes, an element of fun. I so hope it's fun for you. 
But deep down, I want this to be a series about your personal power. I started writing up this series by um, making a list of everything I could think of when I said the word witch. And then after I did all of that, of course, I went to Tashin's Book of Symbols, which for archetypal reference is just an absolute warehouse of content, right? And in this book, they start the discourse of witches with this sentence, nature and its occult aspect, the craftily uncanniness behind the semblance of things is embodied in the witch. She sees with second sight, mediating sacred realities inaccessible to convention faculties of perception. And, you know, when I read that second sentence, I read, she sees with second sight meditating sacred realities inaccessible to conventional faculties of perception. And whether it's meditating or mediating, I actually think it fits beautifully because what we hear in those two sentences are a deep connection to nature, deep listening or the ability to see underneath the surface of things, and an inner stillness, right? All of these being markings of this archetypal witch. And all of these, I hope, being markings of us, of meditators, people connected to the natural world, people able to listen or see underneath the surface of all that noise. And more importantly than anything else, the capacity to be still. When we take that big, bold title of which, underneath it, of course, there are many subheadings, many different subcategories that we can lump ourselves in. You've heard some of them. The kitchen witch, the green witch, the water witch, the hedge witch, right? There's millions of them. All of them sort of denoting or calling out the source of power for that particular witch, that particular person. And so for the, for the month, each Monday, we'll be looking at a different subtype so that maybe you find yours, right? And we're going to start with the kitchen witch because it's mine and I hope maybe it's one of yours too. And the kitchen witch, I found this really lovely little snippet from Michael Pollan who wrote Omnivore's, Omnivore's Dilemma amongst many, many brilliant books and he called out that in ancient Greece, the word for cook, butcher, and priest was the exact same word. And that word shared an etymolo etymological, did I say it right? Root with the word magic. Cook, butcher, priest, magic. All right there together, right? There is something for this particular person that is deeply committed to nourishment as like a primary value, perhaps. Nourishment. Always something on the stove. Always tea brewing, perhaps. Perhaps this person has a deep connection to recipes, maybe ancestral. Yeah, old or connected to the region or the land that you, they are on. Certainly this person finds connection to the earth through the ingredients that they choose. And I think most importantly, this person is deeply aware of the alchemical power of fire right? Because we cook. And mostly we cook with heat, whether that's stove, whether that's open flame, whether it's microwave. We just, you know, we just got a microwave. We have not had one since we've lived in this house. It didn't, there's no space for a microwave. And so we didn't have one and we have not missed it. But recently my kids have discovered microwave popcorn. And I have been hearing about not having a microwave for many months Walmart had them on sale. I bought a microwave. And so maybe that's your, that's your heat. 
But whether it's as ridiculous as the Walmart microwave or the open flame of a hearth that you see in your mental image of the witch's cabin or it's your stove or your campfire, you put something over that flame, some ingredient, and it changes, right? And if we were to look at the body, the chakra system, we would see flame in the belly, in the navel center. And this too is the place of transformation, of change for us, right? Because that fire, that heat is the work the friction of growing, of changing, of transforming its passion, its purpose, its intention. That fire is also sometimes described as the fire that burns the ghosts that haunt you. So that fire is powerful. But we're not just living in the belly. We're not just living in the flame, right? Because that's not what makes a kitchen witch a kitchen witch, the fact that you have a stove. But it's how you step up to the stove, right? It's the intention, the heart that you bring to it that makes something really powerful. And so when we think about the archetype of the kitchen witch, what we're talking about is the heart and the belly and the way those two meet. The heart center in the chakra system is air. Air as breath, as wind, as spirit. And between belly and heart, between where fire and air are is a meeting place. A place with smoke, right? Fire and air meet and they make smoke. And what happens with that smoke is the air just becomes tangible, doesn't it? We now see it, we smell it, we taste it. Something just became tangible. And if we wanna look at that through the lens of our intention, what we're bringing to the moment, well, we just made that manifest. In the same way, we dump flour and water, yeast and salt together, we add some heat and some time, and we manifest bread. Right? We brought this thing forward, we transformed it into something that we set the intention to create. And our practice for the kitchen witch at least, is gonna be connecting into these two centers, heart center, belly center, fire and air. Letting those two energies merge together and from that place, we source our power. We make manifest our intentions of nourishment or connection or care. Right? One of the things that I do almost more than anything else is cook for people that I care about. If you are sick, I want to bring you soup. Right, I make dinner night after night after night, even though my kids consistently hate it. Because I'm confident one day they're going to be like, damn, that was a good dinner, mom. Thanks. I'm like waiting. It's going to happen. I know it. <laughs> oh, I hope so. But it's one of the reasons I do so, because I care. And because I want them one day to be like, man, my mom made awesome dinners, right? I remember hating my grandma's food. But as an adult, I'm like, oh, I wish I had known to appreciate how good that was and how, because it was good, right? I, I didn't like pot roast because what kid likes pot roast? But it was a good pot roast, and it was my grandma's. And when I think of my grandmother today, all these years later, I think about pot roast, right? I remember it because that was a source of connection for us. And so we think about, as we're thinking about how we move through the world, right? You might not be <laughs> exuding pot roast vibes, but what vibes are you wanting to exude? 
vibes of care, of compassion, vibes of remembering our connection to each other, wanting to nourish and be nourished. If that is you, then this practice that we'll do together this evening is where we source that from, from that meeting place of air and fire, from that alchemical transformative place. Yeah. So we're going to do a practice together tonight. And we'll hear some witchy kitchen sounds in the background that I hope you enjoy. You might pop headphones on. And what we'll do is simply invite ourselves into that source of power. And then we stay. We stay and we listen. You might circle back to how we started with those three sort of identifying markers of that witch archetype, connection to nature, the capacity for deep listening or seeing, and inner stillness. And that's what we call in. A willingness to be still, to listen, and to feel into these elements that exist inside the body. So let's get ourselves set up for a practice. You might shift your legs around, get some support if you want, add a blanket if you're chilly, pop your headphones in if you so desire. As you settle your hands onto your lap, your feet onto the ground, and you might decide to close your eyes. And if that doesn't feel quite right for you today, by all means, you can simply take a soft gaze down towards the ground. And together as a group here, we'll start our practice with a deep breath in. Exhale out a sigh. And we'll do this again, inhaling deeply. Exhaling out a sigh. And allowing your breath just to flow. Taking a moment just to settle into the rhythm of your own breath. As you silently say to yourself, now is my time to meditate. Now is my time to meditate. And as you say those words, maybe you'll take a moment just to let go. To let go of everything that has already happened today, everything that you've done. to let go of all those things that you'll do later. And invite yourself to land right here. Maybe you can feel yourself sit a little bit more. Letting go of any of the subtle ways that you hold yourself up, that you prepare to move. Releasing any gripping through your thighs, your seat.
softening through the belly. The chest. Letting go along your shoulders. Your jaw. Letting go of the space between the right ear and the left ear. Relaxing across your eyes. Softening across your forehead. And creating some space behind the forehead. Gradually, without any rush, let's start to notice our breath. Just noticing the ease of your inhale and your exhale. You don't have to change anything or force anything. And if you like, over the next few breaths, you might just feel or imagine as if you were breathing up and down your spine. You might feel breath at the base of your spine, rising up as you breathe in, and breath dropping down as you breathe out. Just a moment here, up and down. Maybe allowing these first few moments to be just nourishment. Providing you exactly what you need in this moment. Slowly, that distance our breath travels will shorten so that we're breathing just from the navel center up to the heart and from the heart back down to the navel center. Inhaling from the navel center, the fire up to the heart, the air, and exhaling air back down to fire. Now 
finding your own rhythm with this breath. Allowing that alchemical, that transformational power of fire. To manifest as it mixes with air. You might find that without much effort, this movement up and down of the breath becomes a circle. A circle inhaling up one side, fire to air, and exhaling down air to fire. Visualizing, feeling, breath as a circle. Touching navel center and heart center. Touching into this particular source of personal power. It's within this circle of breath This circle of fire, air, and smoke. That we find our inner stillness. Resting here without effort. Just under 10 minutes of silence here. Breathing. I'm listening.
Noticing the sense of power between fire and air. between heart and belly. Deepening the breath here. Letting go of that circle breath if you haven't already. Wiggling into your fingers, your toes, feeling your edges. You might straighten up your spine a bit, roll your shoulders back and down. And together as a group here, deep breath in. Exhaling out a sigh. And taking all the time you need to let go of today's practice to slowly open your eyes if they were closed. Thank you guys. Thanks for listening to Our Mindful Nature. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider sharing it with a friend or leaving me a review wherever you get your podcasts. It helps others to find the show. And let's face it, we could all use a few more meditators in our lives. Our Mindful Nature is recorded on Muskogee land and produced with the support of Brianna Nielsen. Deep gratitude is offered to acoustic ecologists Gordon Hempton and Nick McMahon for the use of their nature field recordings in many of these episodes. To join my live classes, ask questions, or learn about my teacher trainings, please visit MerrillArnett.com. Thanks again for listening. I'll see you next week.